Hello, everybody. Welcome to another broadcast of The Good News. I am your host, Daniel Kalenda, and I'm so thrilled to have you with us today. Thrilled to be able to come into your life and into your home and just to share the love of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. You know, I'm addicted to the gospel. Somebody said to me once, don't you ever get sick of preaching the gospel? And I said, no, I can't get sick of it because the more I preach it, the more I fall in love with it, the more facets of it I see. It's like an infinite diamond that always has a new facet. It always has a new color. It always has a new angle. It is the wisdom of God and it is so wonderful. It is so beautiful. And we're going to bring that into your life today in a way that I believe will be a real blessing to you. So I want to encourage you, if you're flipping through the channels, just stop, take a few minutes and listen. Give the Holy Spirit a chance to speak to your life today in Jesus' name. I have a guest with me who is a man that I admire. He is a man of God. He has been around the world preaching the gospel for many years. He and his wife, Yvette, have seen God doing amazing things all over the world. He's preached in more than 3,500 meetings in 56 different denominations. He's seen miracles. He's seen signs and wonders. He's seen multiplied thousands of people come into the kingdom of God. He's here with me on the program today, and we're going to be taking some of your questions and talking about them. And one of the things that I love to do every week is this question and answer episode where we really take real questions from our audience and we answer them in a way that's very honest, very vulnerable, and I believe very helpful. And so we're gonna do that today. But before we do, as always, I would like to play with, for you a testimony. The reason that we play these testimonies is because we see these things happening all over the world. And so when it's time for us to pray for your needs, we approach them from a certain position of great confidence and faith. The reason is because we see it happening all the time. I realize that many of you have maybe never even seen a miracle. Well, I want you to know Jesus is alive. The power of God is real. He can reach to you and touch you today, right now on the show. In fact, the reason that we have contact information on your screen is because we want you to get in touch with us. Let us know how we can pray for your needs because we believe the Lord's gonna touch you today in Jesus' name. So over the next few minutes, use that information. And while you're doing that, watch this amazing testimony of how God has impacted the life of a person just like you. Watch this. Ten years ago, I was in a car with a friend going down the road and we, we hit a ramp. The car jumped. I hit my head on the roof of the car. The accident messed up my neck and my spinal cord. I went to the hospital and they told me I was to buy a neck brace and just hold my neck up. Since the accident, I've been going to local doctors for medicine, but I couldn't just sit at home. I had to go out and work. Otherwise, my family wouldn't have any food, and I had to go out and make money. My children were too young to work, and they were still in school. But because of the pain, I couldn't do hard work because the pain would come back. Due to the situation with my finances, when I would get prescriptions from the hospital, I couldn't always pay for it right away. Most of the time, I would have to wait for months until I had the money. When I came to the crusade, my arms were in so much pain, which prevented me from doing everything, even being able to touch my back. Since the crusade, I am flexible and everything is okay. You should have hope because the Lord will do it. And if we're patient, by the right time, God will do it. Romans 10.13 says, Jesus Christ alone can save you. 
And I was happy because I knew that no matter what, the Lord can save me. My family and I, we always give thanks to God. And at the end of the day, we lose our life. But we really don't lose our life. The Lord has touched me. The Lord has healed me. Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching Good News, our new series exclusive to God TV. You know, the good news is only news if we share it. And it's only good if it's changing lives. As disciples of Jesus, as his messengers, we must tell the world of his great love for them. His love saves, his love redeems, his love is higher than all of the governments of this earth. This is our good news and we must preach it. You can help us to share the good news by simply supporting the broadcast of God TV. Did you know that God TV is reaching over 280 million homes globally, even airing in closed nations? But we need to expand the broadcast so that every nation and every home can hear the message of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to please go online to god.tv slash good news to help support this must be heard message. Thank you for being a part of the global media mission field and thank you for watching. So I'm here with Dr. Shiver today taking your questions and uh, your comments even from social media. I'll just mention to you, you probably noticed throughout the broadcast, there is social media information that's coming up on your screen for Facebook, for Twitter. We would encourage you to go, first of all, follow us on these different social media platforms, but also submit your questions. We'll talk about those questions live on the program today and hopefully be able to bring some clarity. We, we try to stick with themes that are gospel-centric. We want to answer questions about the gospel, about salvation, and so we, we try to stick with that theme. So, Dr. John Shiver, thank you for being with me on the program today. Thank you. And uh, hopefully these questions won't be too uh, much of a curveball for you. <laughs> we, we brought Dr. Shiver because he's the big guns to answer the big no. questions. So uh, I don't see, unfortunately, today, usually I have uh, where the question's coming from. Today I don't have that. But uh, the first question is this, and it's actually kind of a rhetorical statement. The, a loving God would never send people to hell, would he? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> God is perfect. He's absolutely perfect in love. He's perfect in grace. He's perfect in mercy. Mm -hmm. He's perfect in kindness but he's also perfect in justice. And so that question comes up, how can a loving God ever send somebody to hell? Daniel, I think one of the things we, to, to really answer that kind of question, I think we really need to understand what sin is and the seriousness of, of it is because I think sometimes we make it a lot, lot lighter than it is from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. If you look at what the Bible tells us, and the, we can't get into all that obviously today for the essence of time, but about the, the issue of, of Lucifer and the rebellion that, that went on against God, how he was once a great archangel and, and how he re rebelled against God out of, out of pride and arrogance and how God cut him off and cast him down. What people do not understand is God never intended hell to be a place for people to go to. Mm -hmm. It was created as a place of judgment, eternal judgment, for, for Satan and those, those angels that had rebelled with him uh, against God. And when, when God did that, when God cut him off, there was no provision for salvation. His fate was sealed. Hell was his destination. And there was no, there was no other way around that. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Jesus, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. And Satan, when he knew, he knows already, I believe, his, his final outcome, his final destination. 
But he, his way of striking at God was to come and try to defile God's most beautiful possession that was his family, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve and, and, and their descendants, in order that, that might rob God of that, that blessing of his family. The Bible says that God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And when God sees sin, it is literally deja vu, huh. a reminder of that original rebellion. Well. It, is, it is the replaying of that rebellion all over again. And when God sees sin, it's a big deal. It's not a little thing. It is literally the thing that caused, caused the overthrow of Lucifer and the creation of hell for punishment for eternity. And so God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But if people choose to reject the blood of Jesus, to reject the way that God has provided for people to be saved, that's the reason preaching the gospel is so important, is that people know then it's not God that's doing the sending. People are choosing to reject the, the, the only one solution to avoid going there. Yeah. You know, I, um, I think last year I wrote a book called The Judgment Seat of Christ. Yes. And um, I went through several of the judgments throughout Scripture. And one of the themes that keeps reoccurring in the judgments of God is that with judgment, you also see a great act of redemption. Yes. That God is never just, you know, standing there with a hammer pounding. No. He is trying to bring about redemption. He's yes. trying to bring Always. about something better. Always. And, you know, even in the judgment that comes at the end of the age where people go to hell, what we see is that what God is really trying to do is to bring about the original plan that he had for the creation of yes. the world. The hell is partly God's way of ridding the world of evil. Yes. You know, this is what people have been trying to do since the beginning of time. Yes. I mean, every communist revolution and every utopian vision of the world is always this idea of how can we have, a, have the Garden of Eden? How can we have paradise here yes. on earth? And every time human beings try to create a better world, we end up creating a worse world. Yes. But God has a plan yes. to restore everything and to bring about a real utopia, a real paradise. Mm -hmm. And part of that is the destruction of evil once and for all. Correct. And so in that sense, I mean, would a loving God send people to hell? Well, the question is, would a loving God do what's necessary to bring about a good world? Yes. A good existence. Mm -hmm. And um, so I appreciate your insight on that. So um, we have another question here, and this one is very similar to the first one. Can I direct this one at you again, John? Do you mind? <laughs> oh. So it's, uh, the, the question is, again, regarding hell. How could God send people to hell for small sins while allowing murderers and rapists to go to heaven just because they become Christians. Wow. <laughs> well, I think, I think it goes back to the original point that, that sin is sin. Mm -hmm. And it is, a, it is a, a remembrance of the very act of defiance and rebellion that Lucifer originally committed when he rebelled against God. Mm -hmm. And so the... Any rebellion against God is, is still rebellion against God. And when we look at something, I mean, consider what the original sin was. I mean, how, how big of a deal was it just the eating of a piece of fruit? Mm -hmm. I mean, how serious? Was, I mean, that was not murder. Or, no one was harmed by that. But it was the rebellion and the source from which it had come. But that's the the glorious message of the gospel is God has made provision. Yeah. God has made, made a way by the blood of Jesus to cover that sin and to wash that sin and to cleanse that sin, whatever, whatever that sin is, that the blood of Jesus is sufficient to cleanse it and wash it yeah. and remove it Amen. From, the, from the eyes of a holy God. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm reminded of when Paul told the Corinthians, I believe it was, where he said, um, no idolater or adulterer or effeminate homosexuals, covetous yes. thieves, fornicators yes. will inherit the kingdom of God. Here's what I think, you know, as usual with questions like this one, the problem is that the premise is wrong. It's mm -hmm. not that good people go to hell or people that come up, commit small sins go no. to hell and murderers and rapists get to go to heaven. There are no murderers or rapists in heaven. No. And there never will be. What Paul says is even idolaters, fornicators, adulterers, will not inherit the kingdom of God. The key is the next verse. He says, but such were some of you. Before. But you have been washed and cleansed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the, the mistake that people make is that they, they try to uh, take sort of a, a, a metaphorical scale and put on one side of the scale all the good things and on the other side of the scale all the bad things. And whichever side weighs more, then we decide whether a person deserves heaven or not. That's not the way God looks at yeah. it. God, Jesus didn't die on the cross to make bad men good. No. He died on the cross to make dead men live. Yes. It's a totally different thing. It's not just about modifying your behavior, although that is part of it. What this thing is about, what the gospel is about, is transforming you into a new creation in Christ Jesus. If a murderer or a rapist goes to heaven, it's because they... They ceased being a murderer and a rapist once they met Jesus. Jesus transformed their lives from the inside out and made them children of God. And that brings us to another point, which is that whether you've committed little sins or big sins, that's not the point. The point is, have you been born again? Jesus said, if you want to see the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. He didn't say you must have only committed small sins. He didn't say you must have not committed big sins. He didn't talk about sin at all. He said, you must be born again. That's the question. That's the question I have for you as you're watching this. Maybe you've got all kinds of big questions about hell and about salvation. I have one question for you. Have you been born again? Are you saved? Do you know you're saved? At the end of the day, that's really all that matters. Have you been born again into the family of God? That's what Jesus came to do, and that's the gift that he offers today. Yes, yes. So we want to give you the opportunity right here on this program to make that decision and to follow Jesus. And if you've been watching all this week, you have heard again and again and again the wonderful truth of the gospel. You've heard John Shiver's testimony of how he got born again and how the Holy Spirit filled him as a Methodist preacher. And now today, I believe God wants to save you. Maybe, you know, here in the last episode of this week, you've been holding out. What are you waiting for? Maybe you say, well, I still have more questions you haven't answered. Listen, you're never going to have all of your questions answered on this side of eternity. There are always going to be questions. But there's one thing that you can do. You can put your trust in Jesus Christ. You heard John say a couple of days ago on the program that his testimony was this, that through all of his life, Jesus has never failed him. Jesus has never let him down. Jesus has never disappointed him. My friend, do you know Jesus? John, would you just pray with that person and would you lead them into that relationship with Jesus? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so simple. He loves you. Settle that in your heart once and for all. He loves you. He cares for you. And he's right there where you are, whether that's at home, a hotel room, wherever you are right now watching this program. He's there with you by his spirit. We want to lead you just in a very simple, short prayer that if you'll just believe it in your heart, say it with your mouth, God is going to do a miracle for you today right there where you are. Let's pray. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of your Son, Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring for me. Thank you that you made provision for me by giving your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. Today I receive that gift of salvation. I come to you right now through no worthiness of my own. And I receive the gift from you of eternal life. Yes. Have mercy upon me. 
and forgive me for anything that I've done that has offended you. Yes. Wash me right now by that blood. Come into my heart and change my life. I thank you that you've heard my prayer. Yes. And you've answered my prayer. And from this day forward, Jesus is the Lord of my life. Yes. Thank you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, if you prayed that prayer with Dr. Shiver, the Bible says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I want to welcome you into the family of God, and I want to encourage you. This is not the end of your journey with Jesus. This is just the very beginning. So you need to get plugged into a local church. You need to begin to read the Bible every day. If you don't know where to find a church, maybe you don't have a Bible, use the contact information that's on your screen and get in touch with us. We want to be able to stand with you and help you. We want to be able to pray for you and remember you in our prayers uh, before the Lord. Now, as usual, we have prayer requests. Uh, I asked you to send them in at the beginning of the program, and we're just going to take a few minutes here to pray for these needs, many of them by name. Um, the power of God is able to touch you right where you are. And so if we pray over your name, just receive it by faith. If not, we're going to pray for all of you generally anyway. So, Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus as you told us to. Father. Lord, you said the prayer of faith will save the sick. Yes. The Lord will raise them up again. And so, Lord, as we pray for these, we yes. do so in faith and confidence yes. that you will hear and answer. So, Lord, I pray for Angie, who is writing from the United Kingdom. She has uh, been diagnosed with cancer in the spine, ribs, sternum, and liver. The doctors are saying that her condition is incurable. Uh, it, but we reject that report, and we declare healing over Angie's body right now in Jesus' name. And, and not only over Angie, but over anyone that's watching with cancer. We break the power of cancer right now in Jesus' name. Be healed of breast cancer and prostate cancer and bone cancer and liver cancer and blood cancer and brain cancer. Whatever cancer it is right now, we break the power of that thing. We command it to get out of your body. We say be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Audrey has written from Australia asking for prayer for her son that he be free from depression and addiction. Jesus. Father, we thank you for, for Audrey and Father, we pray for her son, yes, Stefan. We speak liberty and freedom to him today in Jesus', Jesus name, name from this addiction yes. and depression. We command it to go in Jesus' mighty yes. name. And Lord, let your presence just come and fill and touch and heal. Yes. In the name Change. Of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Ingrid from the United Kingdom, who's requesting prayer for her daughter, uh, who has psychosis. Uh, again, Lord, the, the doctors have said there's no answer, but Father, we know that with you, all things are possible. We speak to that psychosis. We command it to leave. We command her daughter, uh, her daughter's mind to become perfectly clear right now. Every Every bondage be broken, every infirmity be broken. We say be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bring Leisha from India to you. Lord, she's so hungry. She's so hungry for a fresh Jesus. baptism of the Holy Spirit. Touch her, Lord. Lord, we just ask you right now today to reach out and touch Leisha in India. Lord, fill her with your presence. Yes. Let your glory, let your power, let your anointing come upon her today in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord, for Matthew in India who needs healing and for Gadi in India who, who needs deliverance, especially from sexual addiction, and Marissa in the United Kingdom, Lord, who needs deliverance also. Lord, over every one of these situations, I thank you that you break every bondage in Jesus' name. Lord, that you break every stronghold over their minds, over their bodies. Yes. We say be broken. Yes. Lord, I thank you that the Holy Spirit will come and fill them and yes. abide in them and empower them to live a life worthy of that calling in the name of Jesus. Daniel, here's a little boy, 14 years old. His name is Divine. And he's requesting prayer for his church. The wow. church where he attends is really struggling. 14. 14, and he's, he's writing today. Father, we pray for, yes. for Divine and his heart, Lord. Jesus' name. For the church and for the ministry. And Father, we 
we pray for him. We ask yes. you to bless him and use him in a great and a mighty way, we pray. A great anointing upon this boy's life. And Father, we pray for his church. That Lord, you would visit that church, pour out your spirit there, and do a mighty work. That Jesus be famous Jesus. in divine's church, Jesus. we pray. And I just want to call out a couple things that I uh, feel by word of knowledge. There's somebody that's watching you have... Um, Something in your throat, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's keeping you from being able to swallow. You feel it very strongly, especially on the right side of your throat. We curse that thing, we command it to be broken right now Jesus. in Jesus' name. Jesus. There is there's someone you have a uh, terrible stiffness in your back, right up near the top, near your shoulders. Um, you know, it, it hinders range of motion even in your in the turning of your head. Right now we command that that back problem and Jesus. all back problems. Yeah. If you're watching right now and you have uh, pain or stiffness or limited mobility in your back, just put your hand there right now. Lord, I thank you that every back Jesus. is being healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I command pain to come out Jesus. in Jesus' name. I command uh, paralysis to leave right now in Jesus' name. Your rotator cuff is being healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Blind eyes open in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that you heal even the most debilitating, um, un uncurable disease. I just felt that word in my heart of, of terminal diseases. Lord, I thank you that you're healing terminal diseases right now. No matter what the doctor has said, no matter what the prognosis, no matter what the diagnosis, we will believe the report of the Lord. You sent your word and healed their disease. Lord, Lord I thank you that the sickness will die, but my brother, my sister will live in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those that are seeking the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that you fill them right now to overflowing. Lord, those that have been seeking the gift of other tongues, Lord, I thank you that it would begin to flow right now in Jesus' name. Lord, release the gifts of the Spirit upon your people. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. John, thank you so much for being with me this week. It's been such a, a joy and a privilege. My honor. I hope you'll come back again. Anytime. Okay, uh, we, I'll we, hold you to that. We love you. Thank you, John. Thank, thank you. God for you. And thank you so much for being a part of our week. Join us again next week. I'm going to have another wonderful guest. I can't wait to introduce him to you. Now, if the Lord has touched you today, maybe in, in healing or in salvation, deliverance, whatever it is, use the contact information on your screen and let us know what God has done for you. Also, if you have ongoing prayer requests, we'd love to continue to stand with you in faith and in agreement. Until next time, we have a great day, a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week on The Good News.